<laughs> Hello. Hi, special guest Cole. What up? Coming at you live from the basement. All right, you guys do your thing though. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. All right, guys. Welcome to another video. I'm John Hillier. Baron Lapa. And today we're talking about protein. So, Baron, what are some of the importance of, of obviously consuming protein in our diet? Honestly, protein is used in basically every process imaginable, like imaginable in the body to some extent. Now when we talk about the gym specifically, it's going to be the main driver behind recovery. Yep. Uh, so any of the work that you guys are doing in the gym that's causing muscle breakdown and damage, protein is going to help repair you, get you ready for your next workout again. Awesome. And now there are a lot of types of protein too. So I mean, obviously we're kind of talking about supplements, uh, not so much just eating and consuming it from food form, but one of the, like, what might be some different types of, uh, of protein that you could actually get in a supplement form? Out there right now, you can get your whey concentrate, you can get whey isolate. There's beef proteins out on the market. I've even seen mixtures of beef, salmon, chicken. Yeah. Uh, there's veg vegetable-based proteins. Yeah. Um, you can get your casein. You used to see like egg white protein out there quite a bit. I haven't seen it so much in stores recently, Definitely less but popular. It, was, it was around for a while. And uh, what, what would kind of each be good for? I mean, like in terms of, uh, you know, either protein synthesis, consumption, taste, like what would kind of we be looking for when we are selecting protein? Okay, I'll talk about the whey isolate and the whey concentrate, yep. since that's what we carry here. Okay. Um, so your whey concentrate. Now, a lot of people get a misconception that whey concentrate isn't a high quality protein. That's not true at all. Uh, for example, the whey concentrate that way you carry here, you're still getting about 80% protein per scoop, which is an awesome amount. Um, whey concentrate, that it's just, it's gonna be slower released into the body and the bloodstream than whey isolate is. Okay. So it's better for individuals that, let's say, don't have enough time to eat during the day, but they still wanna make sure they're getting adequate protein intake. They can make a shake, mix it up, bring a couple shakes with them for the day to make sure their protein stays where it needs to be. And the whey concentrate is going to take longer to break down and it's going to ensure that they're not feeling as hungry as they would if they were to be taking a whey isolate. Now a whey isolate on the other hand, pretty much the optimal time to take your isolate is around your workout. So if you're going to the gym and you need to get something quick in like a half hour before, you could slam back a whey isolate shake yep. with some type of simple carbohydrate. That's gonna have you prepared and ready for the workout and it's not gonna weigh down on your stomach. Yep. Uh, or post-workout when you're finished at the gym, it's gonna be a quick shot of protein that's gonna get into the bloodstream very rapidly. Awesome. And now one thing I like that you were saying is in terms of obviously uh, consuming it post-workout, you could also using it as uh, just getting, if you have a hard time getting protein during the day, you could go to more of a, a blend, if you will, or things yes. like that. I think that throws a lot of people off too when they say like a whey blend. It makes it sound like it's watered down or it's really crappy. But uh, so we're looking at 80% uh, protein per scoop. What are the other kind of 20% made up of? Is that like a filler? Like what's kind of... Often there'll be a little bit of fat. I mean, it's just that's for taste primarily, yeah. um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because if you add a little bit of fat to your protein shake, that's going to slow down the release of the protein powder a little bit more and it's going to supply you with protein over a longer duration. Awesome. Now obviously you wouldn't want that in your isolate if you're taking it post-workout. Yeah. Uh, You'll generally get a good, about a gram in an isolate shake, which isn't bad at all. Um, but yeah, you also get some carbohydrates and a little bit of fiber typically in your shake as well too. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, because uh, I know I've actually had people ask, do we have a, a no carb uh, a protein powder? And, and why would you not even want to have that? You wouldn't want completely zero carb because the carbohydrates are, are going to help to elevate your insulin levels a yep. little bit, which is going to help drive nutrients into the muscle cells. Yep. Um, and people always miss out on carbohydrates when they shouldn't be because that's one of the other big keys to recovery is you need to restore the glycogen stores in your muscles that you've depleted during your hard workout. Yep. If you don't do that, your performance in the gym come next workout isn't going to be nearly as good as it could be. Awesome, awesome. And uh, so in this, I mean, there might be some other things that I, when I'm looking at a protein, I'm looking for like in terms of uh, BCAAs or other additives, any of that stuff you should be looking for in protein. I mean, I think it's all goal dependent. Um, if someone's using it as a meal replacement, I would typically look for some higher carbohydrate amounts, some higher fats coming from uh, good omega-3 sources. Uh, those types as well could also come with a nice vitamin and mineral profile if you're using it as a meal replacement. If you're just using it as a typical shake, 
I would I would honestly just add the other things yourself if that's something you really want to do. And we used to say a lot of that to you know mask gainers. They had some popularity for quite some time. Yeah. I mean I, I don't they still are out there in the market, but I mean uh, in terms of mask gainer. Could you not just do the same with what we have existing for our protein now? You can definitely do it the same for yourself. And I honestly find it often tastes better when you make yeah. your own. I mean, a really simple recipe, for example, is you could take away isolate, mix a scoop away concentrate with it. So you're getting your 30 to 50 grams of protein. You could throw in a cup, cup and a half of oats, uh, some good natural peanut butter and a handful of berries. And there yeah. you go. You've got a natural uh, homemade weight gainer. Yeah that you didn't have to go out and spend a hundred bucks on. Correct, and you, I mean, in terms of the food sources, you're also be getting a lot more nutrients inside that from the actual, lot, the yeah, whole yeah. food uh, quality. Definitely. Um, and in terms of uh, who should be taking this, is, it, is this like across the board? Like wh who in your opinion should be taking protein? I think every single person out there, even gym goer or not, needs to be taking protein in some regard. It doesn't have to come from a shake, but it definitely makes it a lot more convenient. Yeah. Uh, for those individuals that choose to train, uh, the shake becomes even more important, I think, especially because if you choose to use the isolate, it's going to be that much more bioavailable post-workout. It's going to get into your system really quickly and get recovery started as soon as possible rather than waiting home, yeah. waiting to get home and eating a, a big meal. Yep. And anybody should be uh, maybe avoiding it. Again, if someone kind of has maybe kidney issues, uh, you definitely want to consult with a physician before buying a protein powder or breastfeeding yeah. again too. I'm, I'm pretty adamant too. I mean, this is one of the absolute most safest supplements in the world. And I mean, uh, you're getting it in your diet anyways. This is just a more, maybe a more convenient or an easier, maybe less expensive way to get higher protein in, uh, into your diet. So, I mean, whether they're kids, uh, even geriatric population doesn't matter. I mean, I am very pro protein. I mean, I, I usually say, when we're talking with the different types too, some you might have a hard time absorbing, maybe it doesn't sit as well in your stomach, right? So then you can look to either an isolate or a different type or like a, a as you said, a vegetarian yeah. protein, a beef protein. You have so many different options based on whatever your lifestyle choices are, your nutrition choices are. I mean, I think that uh, now more than ever, that there's there's a ton of selection out there. Definitely. And if I know, I know a lot of people sometimes complain about the price of buying a protein powder, but if you really break it down and if you were to go out and get a serving of meat at 30 grams of protein per serving, yeah. you're going to be spending a lot more on right. the meat than you are on, let's say, a tub of 30 scoops of protein powder. So I always tell them, put it into your grocery bill. Yep. Like Start considering it a food item because honestly, it's basically coming from the dairy family. Yes, it, it may as well be called a food at this yeah. point. Um, and, and I don't think anyone should hesitate to use it. Well, guys, uh, make sure any other questions, anything else you want to see from us, uh, make sure you comment down uh, down below, ask any questions. We're more than happy to hopefully give some information. Make sure you uh, hit like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned and keep staying better than yesterday.